Today we're going to look at the uh, Dow Jones Industrials. This is brought to you by FreeChartVideos.com. Using time-honored techniques to understand modern markets. This video is for educational purposes only, not to be intended to be used as any form of investment advice. I can draw lines on charts, but you have to draw your own conclusions from your own due diligence and make investment decisions that are suitable for your financial situation. I'm not a licensed professional. I'm just a guy that draws lines on charts. Well, let's draw some lines on charts. We're looking here at um, almost four years of uh, chart data for the Dow Jones Industrials. Mm, not quite. Falls just a little bit short. And uh, we've talked about some of these things before, but I want to I want to go into a little bit more detail. First off, this is the top of the bull market. I'm going to start a line here, and I'm going to stretch it across the April highs of 2010. And the interesting thing is, as I've mentioned uh, in in some uh, other videos. We are now trading above this line from the bull market high in the April 2010, uh, what seemed like a high at the time, and many people were saying now we're heading back down, yet just a few months later, here we are up above that line. I believe that uh, does not bode well for the argument that this from here to here was a bear market rally. Let's look at the chart in a little bit more detail, but before we do that, I want to remind you there was an inverse head and shoulders that marked the bottom of the uh, bear market. And we broke out of that, and we are now in the process of fulfilling the projected price movement out of this pattern. And that projected price movement is to 12,000 as a minimum. Let's go in uh, and look at a little bit more detail. Looking at a, a daily chart, I had been drawing uh, lines to establish the channel that the Dow and the S&P had been trading in. And I had not been using the panic bottom. And I've got some reasons for doing that, and I researched it as well. And uh, based upon my research, I ended up using that set of lines as my trend channel for the Dow and the corresponding set of lines for the S&P. And if you look, uh, that really worked quite well because when we when we broke down out of that uh, channel on the flash crash to begin with, that is technically the time when you're most prone to have a really swift downward move is on the break uh, of, a, of the bottom line of an ascending channel. Then the pullback came right back to that line. So that tells me this was the right line all along. And it happened to be nice that it was parallel with this one, too. Um, let's, let's do something else while I've got this chart here. Let's, let's bring up some moving averages real quick. I switched to a two-day chart, and I'm using a 25-day moving average and a 100, well, not 25-day, but a 25-period moving average and a 100-period moving average, which draw the same lines as uh, the uh, 200 in the 50-day on a one-day chart. But uh, in order to use this chart data to show what I want to show, I had to switch over to a two-day period. You can see we had the what's known as a golden cross back in June in the Dow, and we had one right back uh, around the beginning of October in the Dow. Now keep in mind, I'm going to draw a horizontal line at 12,000, which is the target from this inverted head and shoulders. And let's make that um, uh, orange so we won't miss it. Um, now we're going to zoom in. I just want to show you this golden cross here, the 50-day cross, the 200-day uh, golden cross here, 
50-day crossed the 200-day. Interesting, isn't it? That coincided on the very, uh, right around the very same period of time that this bear market uh, resistance line was taken out in the Dow. Coincidence? I don't think so. But let's, let's look at a little bit more detail. Looking now at a four-hour chart, we see a little bit more detail. This is where the uh, Golden Cross took place just recently. Here's the flash crash. And the, the, the way I saw this thing after it started to develop, I, I picked up real quickly on... these three peaks right here on this return here and here because um, those lining up just seem to be more than coincidence and then we had the bottom down here as well let's make these my favorite consolidation color which is kind of a light blue I've just kind of learn to use these different colors for these different things and we're going to kill these little lines for now if you look at the pattern that we have here here and here we can draw a neckline and it becomes a slightly upsloping inverted head and shoulders which, by the way, is the best kind of head and shoulders to trade on because they have a tendency to produce the, the most explosive and the most dependable move when the prices break out of the pattern. Now, here's the, the really interesting thing. If we take this line and go to here to measure our distance of what we expect out of this pattern and we add it on to where it broke out, well, look, we get right at, you know, and I didn't count this, this uh, bottom candle down here, but we get almost exactly the same price as the large head and shoulders, and that is 12,000. I think the Dow is going to 12,000, and the S&P is going to 1240 to 1250. Let's look at just a little bit more detail. Looking now at a 30-minute chart. If we start here on this first reaction, we find that these three valleys line up. And we also find that there's a pretty nice little parallel channel on top as well. Again, I'm starting here because this sudden burst uh, move here on in the 1st of uh, September, moves like that when you break out of a pattern. Uh, it's just it's very difficult to use that kind of a straight line move to establish a steady trend channel so once things start to develop I'm, I'm not averse at all to just say okay this got us out and now the market begins its ascent after this breakout um, not everybody might feel comfortable doing that but when things line up so nicely I wouldn't do that right away, but after you begin to see peaks and valleys and where things line up, I think that's, uh, that's acceptable. So anyway, this is where we stand today. If we go in uh, five minutes, you can see that I've drawn a little green line here across these last two peaks. Um, really, what I'm kind of uh, waiting to see is when this line breaks or if it breaks this should be support I do think this is going to keep going up uh, this is the neckline uh, from our inverted head and shoulders pattern so that should give us um, strong support should we ever need to test it so the Dow looks real strong. I mean, it was up just a little bit today, uh, mixed markets. But uh, here's another thing to, to be on the watch for. Since we are now at the same level that we were at about 11, 1250 back in April, that's a psychological barrier. That's got to break, obviously. So let's see if the market can take that out and head up to 12,000. I'm thinking it's going to happen. 
uh, time frame, it, you know, it could be early 2011. But I think it's in the works. So anyway, it's a, a thanks for watching this. When you get a chance, I'd appreciate it if you could uh, go visit freechartvideos.com and uh, check out some other stuff we got on the site there. We've got some kind of neat uh, uh, links to some things that might help you in your trading. We've got uh, a link to a very nice uh, real-time updated live update futures uh, chart that in, in includes uh, the major mar world markets, of course, all the U.S. futures markets, as well as uh, commodities, metals, you name it. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you'll uh, stick around and check out the site and look for more videos soon.